Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Gilly Kit's latest controller, their King Kong 3 Max controller. I wanted to say King Kong 3 Pro Max, but I stopped myself. It is the King Kong 3 Max controller. <laughs> we'll set it again. This controller is easy to recommend. I was easy to recommend their previous controllers. This continues to be the case. Their analog sticks were the standard for their first controller, which they're introduction where they're whole based analog sticks they are truly excellent and they align to what i really like in an analog stick if you were in the market and you were taking a look at something like a switch pro controller it's kind of easy to recommend gillikit's series of controllers because they more or less operate as a switch pro controller to a switch itself and while switch pro controllers do operate on other platforms via bluetooth the king kong 3 max controller does it through bluetooth as well however they also included what is a new addition here is their USB receiver, which can operate at a thousand hertz polling rate. This will only operate at a thousand hertz polling rate with this specific USB receiver. The other benefit is that it's much easier to actually get up and running on any PC platform. This includes Steam OS, so you can just plug it in through a USB and it'll just show up. So if you were looking for a really good controller that connects to the Switch like a Switch Pro, connects to a PC very easily and just works, this is one controller where the Switch Pro controller, being as expensive as it is, the King Kong 3 controller finds itself in a really good spot because it has such good analog sticks and with the new features that it has, you can quickly switch between digital analog versus analog analog triggers. We'll get into them more at the end of this video. However, for right now, let's get straight on into the unboxing and review. Okay, let's jump into a quick unboxing of Gilly Kit's King Kong 3 Max controller. Much like their other King Kong controllers, it comes with this pretty nifty travel case. And what else is nifty on here is you can actually see a quick guide on what the function keys do. So you can do like HD Rumble, which is their new Rumble motor that's a part of this controller. But on the back, they also have a an interesting travel kit that can go with this case. However, it's a little bit odd. We'll get to that in a moment because it includes some other gear here that just doesn't fit and we'll go over that in just a moment let's just see what else is in the box so we can finish the unboxing part of this and then we'll go into the build quality part of this review so you have a quick like instructional book booklet of how to get started and advertisements for other stuff you have a gilla kit sticker and then a quick how-to guide on how to get going now that we've gotten that quick unboxing out of the way, I want to just quickly dive into something that I find a little bit odd about this. So while the travel case is something that I really like, again, this is not something that I think I would ever actually use. Like I'm never going to really be taking my controller with me, but I love that they include this with it and it is a nice protective shelf for it. Not only do they include that, but they include a space for the button puller for the the face buttons right here to pull those out, but they also include a USB receiver. This is actually 1000 Hertz and we'll touch more on that a little bit later. Uh, and that's really cool. But the part that makes it much simpler is that you just kind of toggle over here. So when you power this up, you're going to hold this down and you'll toggle it over. You can see that I'm already in that mode. When this powers up, there's not something that you can see is that it kind of flashes on this side and flashes on this side and it rumbles with their new rumble motors, which is really cool. I've digressed a bit. I want to talk about the thing that I find weird. Now, while all of this fits into the case just fine, you'll notice that they include extra elite types of back controller buttons. So we have two different styles. So you can either do these right here, which are different types of like smaller back paddles. And it is a different form factor and maybe that's something that you actually like and then we have something that are more traditional or traditional this is what you would find on the xbox series elite type of back paddles and this is really cool and works very well but if you were to put these onto your controller when you put them on it no longer fits into the travel case which is a bit of an oddity to me i don't know why they would do that now again i don't think i'm going to be using that travel case all that much but it's just something that I wanted to point out that just seems a little bit odd to me. Now, the other part here, you're thinking if you have these buttons here, why would you need an extra set of buttons? Well, if you take a look at them, you can actually see right here that they're all different lengths. So that's why you need another set of buttons. So we're going to go here and go ahead and switch this over to Xbox layout. From here, we can see their new mechanical face buttons. They feel quite nice to push in, but this is something Gilly Kit kind of prides themselves on is that they go above and beyond to make sure that you have the best gaming experience possible. For what it's worth, their analog sticks really are truly fantastic. 
And there we go, we have the Xbox face button layout with the same colorway. For the rest of the video, I will be installing the back paddles on here, but that does mean that I will sacrifice the ability to actually stow these away. Now these can come on and off, but I really don't want to be fussing around with taking them on and off. It is rather easy to take them off. You want to push O against them. So you want to push this way to take them off and it comes off pretty easily. But if you wanted to go the other way, it's, it's not going to come off. So they are very specific in the direction that they go and are firmly in place when they are there, which is a neat little thing, much like the Xbox Series Elite controller back pedals. All right, now that the back pedals are installed on here, what we have is an extremely nice controller. We have Hall Effect analog sticks and Hall Effect triggers. This is something that is outrageously wild to see. Like, this is a lot of value at this particular point. The only thing I wish was that with this included dongle, it worked with Xbox. Unfortunately, it does not. It's PC only. So you're only going to get Switch, Android, iOS, uh, PC, and that's pretty much it. So you can do all of those via Bluetooth and via this dongle only will be via PC. So that is the only trade-off here. The other part that I want to mention is they have this little slider so that if you wanted to just have full-on Switch-like appeal, this becomes a digital trigger, much like how the Switch operates. Now if we remove these, you can see that they're full analog. So we have Hull Effect analog sticks right now, digital analogs. Super easy. So whatever type of configuration you prefer is very easy to set up. Let's go ahead and start seeing how this actually operates in real life. Here we are looking at the switch controller functionality of it. So we can see that we're in switch mode right now. So you can see the switch icon right there and we're already connected. If you wanted to switch which port number you're going to want, you're going to just press this button to switch it over. Now, very quickly, this may not make a bunch of sense for a bunch of people. So I'm going to go ahead and press home. Now, if you don't have this controller connected, you're going to go to controllers. Now, it may make sense to go pairing new controllers because that's what you think you'd want to do. But that's not what Nintendo means. What you want to actually do is go to change grip order for whatever sense that makes. When you do that, you're going to see that this controller disconnects and from here you'd actually just cycle to the switch controller and then have it illuminate if that doesn't connect to you connect a usb-c cable here to there and that'll help the pairing process automatically without having to do anything whatsoever you're going to see that as soon as they do this it's going to connect and come up and we're done so that's the pairing process to get to the switch and for all intents and purposes you should have seen the icon if you didn't i'll go back to it real quick if we go to the pairing you can see that how it shows up is it actually shows up as a Switch Pro controller. Now, obviously, I have the Xbox face button mapping right here, so this is not conducive for playing on a Switch. By default, it does come in Nintendo format, so if you are planning to use this for the Switch, there's nothing that you need to do and everything just works, even so far as, like, just using gyro. So there's nothing you need to do because this is effectively saying, hey, I'm a Switch Pro controller it's just going to work. So that's all you need to do. Now, if you wanted to do something else, like, you know how jump is here? Maybe people don't like the jump button here. So what we can do is we're going to hold down the gear button and I'm going to hold down this button at the same time. And then I should hold this. Now, if I press this button, it jumps. So that's how you could easily map the back buttons as well, and that'll work for anything. That's the same mapping no matter which mode you're on. Right, let's say we wanted to map another function. So there's going to be a small vibration press, so you're going to hold down the button and the uh, gear key, and then I'm going to press B. This is B for the actual controller. So now if I press B and up, I run. However, if I hold this button down, it's also run. This particular segment is pretty quick. Now, obviously, if you're in the switch mode, you'd want to actually go ahead and switch these over so that these operate like a switch should. And obviously, you have the other features and functionality. So if you were looking at the Switch Pro controller and said, you know, that's kind of expensive, but you wanted something that I would argue is actually better than the Switch Pro controller, this King Kong 3 Max is an easy recommend if you're looking for a third-party controller for the Nintendo Switch. All right, let's show you how the King Kong 3 Max USB receiver works. So I have the GPU Max 2 here, and we have some USB-A ports on the side. I'll go ahead and plug this in. That connects. And now, as far as the machine is concerned, that is an Xbox 360 controller that is connected to it wired. So I'm going to go ahead and press the buttons to get this on. You can see that it's going ahead and connect. Now it has connected. You see in the background that it went. So if you ever need to recycle this connection, it's not working. What you can do is you can just hold down the connection button right here. You're not going to be able to select ports. So you can see that that disabled 
and as we reconnect to this receiver, which it'll do automatically, there's nothing that you need to do. You can see that it connected and that showed back up. So this is a really foolproof way to actually get this controller hooked up with this particular dongle. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like over here. And one thing that obviously Gillikit always pr prides themselves on is the circularity test here. So if we take a look and go to, let me just use my finger. So if I go ahead and test circularity, you can see that we have 0% error. It's like outrageously engineered to make a perfect circle here. So this is something that, for all intents and purposes, you're really not going to have a problem. Uh, there may be some instances where you need to have a more square form factor, but things like PPSSPP uh, allow you to just press a button and it'll kind of auto-convert it for you. For all intents and purposes, you're going to be pretty fine there. But when we go ahead and press all these other buttons, you can see that they work. And if we bring this up, we can see that the analog right there, I'll kind of, I should zoom into this on the video. So we have full analog control here and it's, uh, it really is nice action that they have here. Now, if we go ahead and switch this over to digital only, this shouldn't be analog anymore. And it is just digital. That's really cool. So you can see right there, there is no analogness to it whatsoever. So if you wanted to just quickly switch back and forth between a digital or an analog trigger, that does work as advertised. Now, one of the other nice things about there is when you connect with this receiver, the polling rate is actually at 1000 hertz. Let's see if I can get that up for you. Just so you can see there, it is indeed showing up as 1000 hertz, which is really awesome to see and another reason why you'd want to use this dongle instead of using Bluetooth. One thing I do want to mention here is on this receiver, I didn't get the best range on this. So I was playing in my living room. I had a SteamOS PC that I was testing for a YouTube video that I'm going to be doing, and I wanted to plug this in. It worked no problem without any configuration, showed up right on SteamOS. However, when I was around 12 feet away from my TV, which is about 12 feet, receiving every command, I actually had to get a few feet closer before the controller was perfectly responsive. So the distance that this works at isn't very far, at least in my testing. One last thing that I wanted to mention is there is a method to have gyro translate through into the X input side for the PC side of gaming. Now, while this isn't absolutely perfect, you can have different tiers of gyro aiming and it'll only apply to left trigger and left bumper. So more or less where you're hoping that a game will align for aiming or bringing up iron sights. So when you press left trigger, it will bring up your iron sights. And then at that point, you can then use the gyro features of the controller itself, which will try to translate that to right analog stick movement where your right analog stick will still work and supersede what's going on. However, there will be micro movements that will still translate through through the gyro. There are three tiers of that. One is like these micro movements, that's like tier one. Tier two expands that range a bit more. And then tier three expands that the full way and gets kind of sloppy. So this is a good implementation and I'm glad that Gillikit actually explored this. I wish that there was a way that we had the method to kind of tweak what these tiers did a little bit, but I do really like that they try to streamline this and make it as simple as possible because all of this can be executed directly on the controller itself by engaging these tiers. That is the final piece of this review. Overall, it is very easy for me to recommend this particular controller. There are a few caveats, like I've already mentioned in this video, where the travel case doesn't really work if you have these back paddles on. I do really like having the back paddles on there, and I plan on keeping them on at all times. I like that it's a good Switch Pro controller, and I also like that it is a fairly decent Xbox input controller. That's why I already have the buttons aligned like Xbox style, and I plan to keep it like that for a while. There is one part here that I think is a little bit of a deal breaker, and that is with the USB receiver that is there. I had some difficulty using that controller in that method while being a little bit further than 10 feet away. I actually had to get to about eight feet away from my PC with the USB dongle connected. This is the USB dongle pointing towards me for it to actually be super responsive. The further I was away, it felt like there were lots of missed inputs. So if you plan on using this on a PC that is in your living room and you're more than 10 feet away from that, you are likely to expect some signal problems. So think about that if you have that particular problem, if you're looking to use this controller in that specific zone. If you're gonna be closer, 
I don't think you're going to have any problem whatsoever. So that's the only caveat that I would mention in this particular review. Otherwise, very easy to re recommend Gillikit's latest controller. If you already own Gillikit's previous King Kong controllers, it's a little bit hard to recommend at that point because those controllers are also excellent. And there aren't that many improvements to this particular controller over the previous models for me to say you should buy another one to upgrade. It doesn't really work there. However, if you did not buy a King Kong controller yet and you were in the market for a third party controller, very easy to recommend this controller. I hope that was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.